thank you all so much. <clears throat> I haven't yet told you about my eighth grade science fair project, and I, that's not in the NCTE. It was quite good. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Eileen, for the generous introduction and to the rest of the selection committee for their hard decision-making work. Thank you to the folks who nominated me and those who were in support of the nomination, and I didn't know there were 67 signatures at one, on one letter. I want to thank Heather Adams, Jess Enoch, Lene Gaillet, Doug Hesse, Charlotte Hogue, Jordan Jack, Shirley Logan, Andrea Lunsford, Roxanne Mountford, Chris Ratcliffe, Jackie Royster, Wendy Scherer, Jack Selzer, and Scott Weibel. Thanks most of all to my family who has supported me over the decades, and especially to my beautiful husband, John Olson, who can't be here today, but who's watching from home. It takes a village to select an exemplar. So it's a joy to be with the members of my village this morning, the four C's. Whether we're among the 29 who have stood where I'm standing, we are a village of exemplars, sometimes referred to as trailblazers or workhorses. Teachers who over the course of four C's history have contributed admirably to our profession. The teachers in our village continue to guide and inspire us all. They have founded the Four C's and then all the caucuses and SIGs within the Four C's, pioneered graduate programs in rhetoric and composition, established basic writing programs, ESL programs, undergraduate and graduate writing centers, argued for the importance of reading, speaking, silence, listening, performance, and virtue to our work. Our teachers have demanded respect for vernaculars, dialects, and languages, extolled the value of writing across the curriculum and of transfer, demonstrated the significance of identities, emotions, and experiences to every rhetorical transaction, and opened up histories and practices of rhetoric across genders, sexualities, abilities, ethnicities, and cultures, both here and around the world. This is our village are ever-expanding, ever-influential, ever-hopeful four C's. We are the teachers who believe that rhetoric should do something, should make the world a better place, and our students come to us with the same hope we have long held for our own better educated selves, that education, that our teaching and their learning will change their lives. Even those students from the most impoverished backgrounds come to us with one hope, one dream in mind, that their lives might be better than their parents, that the lives of their own children might be better than theirs so far have been. For these reasons, we villagers spend our days, nights, and weekends working to help our students claim their authority, their agency, their rhetorical power. Their acts of writing and our acts of teaching are acts of hope. Now, teaching is much more than about our own intellectual achievements, more than grades, course loads, and assignments, more than about building our vitae or winning awards, though I must say that receiving this exemplar award does feel pretty good. <laughs> teaching is about our own movement between worlds, arms out, touching students' lives at the same time they touch ours, making the connections that count. Our shared goal is to articulate a vision of hope and expectation. Towards such a future, we support our students as they come to voice, feel empowered in critical discussions, and write, speak, sign, and perform the words that reshape and repair the world that pave our future. Of course, our imagination of the future will always be richer than any actualized time to come, but to have such hope is to envision a future that requires not only imagination, but rhetorical action. And that is exactly the kind of work our village does so very well. 
So to all the members of our village, thank you for this honor. You have no idea how much it means to me. Thank you all.